Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you this morning. We have an update for the SEC versus Ripple, and you're going to like it. We're going to hear from the one and only Jeremy Hogan. And also, we're going to talk about Eddie Griffin, the comedian who is huge in the XRP. 64 million XRP got moved. Hester Pierce is calling for an ETF. We'll talk about that. And U.S. banking giant offers crypto services. This is not a small matter. And by the way, former U.S. Treasurer Lawrence Summers makes incredible positive comments about cryptocurrencies. And we're also going to talk about the European Central Bank and they reveal new forms of cross-currency settlement. And you're going to like who's involved in it. And we're also going to take a look at XRP price targets, support and resistance numbers, and see what in the world is going on with price. Let's roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's go ahead and get started. You'll see this number right here. 1.6 trillion for the cryptocurrency market cap is off by 8.15% here. In other words, I've said it daily here almost now that the money has been leaving the market. The money that has been in this market was up over $2.5 trillion dollars. Being at 1.6 tells me that there's a lot of big money that has left this market, at least temporarily, and not new money in the market. So, uh, you know, I think we're above $3 trillion. We get past the Ripple case. I think we're above $3 trillion in the cryptocurrency space in this market when we get some clarity here easily easily if not like way beyond three because i know that there's a lot of people that are really concerned about what's going to happen respectfully when it comes to bitcoin ethereum xrp all the top coins right so let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers now bitcoin bleeding heavily down to thirty eight thousand two hundred thirty one dollars and twenty four cents some would say a bargain at these prices off by 5.5 percent on a 24 hour and 21 plus on the seven day ethereum coming in now at 20 four hundred dollars uh plus and we are off by 8.6 on the 24 8.86 excuse me on the 24 hour 37.32 on the seven day coming down to cardano it's off by 10 percent plus on the 24 hour 28.88 percent off on the seven day as well uh xrp uh i would cover doge but it's not a real coin to me you know and i don't care if it's on flare networks or not um you can you can show me the use case for it and you can show me the partnerships and we'll start to deal with it as something other than a meme coin. But until then, it's a meme coin pumping up. All right. Look at number seven here. XRP at 93 cents, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually an area that we've talked about for the last couple of weeks as a possibility. It's not the area none of us want to be at. But the reality is, is that it's here. So let's take a look at this. 93 cents, 16.67% off in the last 24 hours. 30.60% off on the seven day. Over half of that has happened in the last 24 hours, right? We're going to talk about what's going on. But here, before we do, let's talk about this. This is the ranging of XRP and Fiat Link's page doesn't want to act right this morning. But here we are. It says we just jumped to 94 cents. We're ranging between 84 cents as a low, 0 0.8460 overnight. And now we're ranging at the top at 105. It's just really ugly out here. But again, we'll talk about these points and whether or not they were predicted. And the analysts that we've been looking at have talked about every one of these spots. So here we go. This is Eddie Griffin. I'm not going to play the whole clip, but I do want to show you that he is big into XRP. And he certainly believes that SEC will come, will come out as a loser and XRP will be the winner in that case. And XRP will go to the moon, as they say. And I am inclined to agree with him. None of this is financial advice from me or him. Here we see Michael Val Five Links Hall of Famer da data provided by popular blockchain sleuths show that Ripple and several top-tier exchanges led by Coinbase have recently transferred amount close to 64 million XRP. That's a lot of XRP for the fact that U.S. retail investors 
really can't get a hold of it in the same manner that they used to, right? It's not on Coinbase, not on Binance US. And we know that if you want to get it, you have to go to either Uphold or trade into the asset from BitTrue. So, which means you have to send something like Ethereum or Bitcoin there, right? And then trade into XRP once you're there. So that's the way that works. And shout out to both of those exchanges for still making it available for u.s retail investors but this is a lot of xrp moving around and we report on it every time we see it and i can't help but feel like at some point we're going to see a hashtag relist here this is hester purse talking about from the sec talking about uh the fact that you know she needs and she believes we need to see a bitcoin exchange traded fund an etf and it is long overdue well well said hester you know, but, you know, we got to get the other, you know, chairman and Gary Gensler to really, you know, approve that for that to actually happen. But again, this leans into what we covered yesterday from Brian Brooks. Shout out to him. Now the CEO of Binance US, who explained what we've talked about here for more than a couple years is that introducing these papers traded style products on top of the underlying hard asset just as you do in the metals market, will deepen the liquidity for the asset and the products for the asset. And this will help to calm the markets over time. Will they be volatile like they are now? Sure. But over time, you will begin to see with the introduction of an ETF, call options, swaps, puts, and all those things we've talked about, we already have futures. This would help deepen the liquidity for each asset and then begin to calm the market as well. This is a very young market, by the way. So taking a look here, this young market is not stopping one of the biggest banking giants in the United States of America, Wells Fargo, from offering crypto services to its wealthiest clients. And I would read the article, but that's pretty much what we're talking about here. And this is really remarkable to me that you're going to see Wells Fargo follows the example of several big banks in recent months, including Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, Bank of New York, Mellon. Uh, I mean, is there anything else you need to see here? You know, I mean, I know that the question I get a lot of, you know, uh, uh, DMs I get and things of that nature. People are like, man, what's going on? Are we in a bull market or are we in a bear market? I mean, is this thing over I mean, none of us know the answer. Let's not kid ourselves, right? But I don't personally believe so. I believe we're actually in the front of something enormous. And the reason I do is because Wells Fargo is about to start offering crypto to their clients. And so are all these major big banks. You tell me. Why are they getting into it if it's over, right? Because it's not over. That's my personal opinion. Former U.S. Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers agrees, too. He said cryptocurrencies could stay a feature of global markets as something akin to digital gold. I mean, it, this gets deeper even. I mean, you know, it's like, look, look at this. I mean, European Central Bank speaking on new forms of cross-currency settlement, RippleNet. Now, take a look at this. This is from Wrath of Common. That article is actually uh, covering Wrath of Common's tweet. So I just went and got it directly. Interesting slide with Ripple by Klaus M. Lober, head of oversight of the European Central Bank. Ripple Connect and Ripple Liquidity are listed as if product names. <laughs> it looks like Ripple Messaging and XRP are a split, our use are split out suggesting more familiarity than most presenters. Look at this. This is from the ECB. And if you're not following Wrath of Conman, I would. The guy is very good. And this is what I'll show you right here. And obviously, it does not say XRP, right? But what do we know? We know what Dillip Rouse told us. And we followed Dillip, Ra Dillip Rao when he was at Ripple. Now he's retired. Wish him well. Hope he's having a great retirement. But we also know I played just as recently as yesterday, I believe it was, a comment from Dillip Rao from a couple of years ago who told us that it is a phase-in operation. First the Ripple software, then the Ripple net, then you get them to use the asset XRP, and then the holy grail is to get them to actually hold the asset. 
right? And that's where we're on the path to. I can see it clearly. I think you can too. Now, before we go any further, I do want to go ahead and just get a highlight here very quickly from Jeremy Hogan, Legal Briefs. Thank you, my friend. I tried to keep everybody uh, attuned to what was going on that wasn't able to tune into the hearing. And I think people were uh, pretty happy about that yesterday on Twitter, but I do want to give this clip here where he really breaks this down. Listen to what Jeremy Hogan says about yesterday's case. But alas, I think being cute might have backfired on the SEC in this case because the judge knew the case very well since she wrote it. Right at the beginning of the hearing before the SEC even started, she began with the question, do you have any cases that say that a fair notice defense is a subjective test? Well, Sorry about that. Before we go any further, I just want to say that that's what yesterday's motion was about, was SEC was trying to strike down the fair notice defense that Ripple is using and intends to use here. And it was just a mad dog fight. And the SEC was really rocked back on their heels because Judge Netburn was not having it and just kept asking them to explain. And I must tell you, if I'm paraphrasing, there was a point within there that the SEC was basically saying, if we could just see the legal communications between Ripple and their legal counsel, that Jorge Tenrero, and I'm paraphrasing, but be, in, in, uh, in a short matter of words, I'm just shortening the, the, the long and short here. You know, Jorge Tenrero actually suggested that you know, they can't have a fair notice defense of not being, you know, really duly noted, you know, and people notifying the SEC, notifying them that they were, in fact, a security. And Jorge Tenrero was actually suggesting that because Ripple's legal counsel, the SEC believes, notified them that XRP was, in fact, a security, that it shouldn't matter that there was ambiguity coming from the SEC at the time. Now, that is just I can't even believe that the judge actually allowed him to say that. Anyway, let's hear Jeremy <laughs> on the rest of this thought here. I knew right there where things were heading at that point because the fair notice defense is an objective test. If the fair notice defense stems from the constitutional right to due process and from the Upton case, quote, due process requires that laws give the person of ordinary intelligence a reasonable opportunity to know what is prohibited, close quote. Now that is an objective standard, what a normal person would know, not what a lawyer thinks or Garling House or any particular person, that's all irrelevant. What is relevant to the defense is what a regular, normal market participant would know. Now, a subjective test asks, would ask what the defendant knows. Did Ripple sell XRP thinking it wasn't a security? Did Garlinghouse know? Did Larson know? In that case, what their lawyer told them is very relevant and therefore the SEC can get it. So when the judge asks right away, do you have any case authority that a fair notice defense is a subjective test? That's kind of like asking, do you have any case authority that Texas is not a part of the United States? I knew it was not going to go well for the SEC because, at least for now, Texas is a part of the United States and we love them, despite its birthing of the Dixie Chicks. We forgive you. Jeremy's great. I love it. So shout out to Jeremy Hogan for the update. He firmly believes, and I certainly do too, but uh, that the judge will rule in favor of Ripple's fair notice defense and not in favor of the SEC. We'll see how that shakes out. Remember, Jeremy Hogan's never wrong, and if he is, it's usually someone else's fault. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. You're amazing, man. All right. So here we go. Let's move on. So we know the ECB here uh, is talking about new forms of cross-currency settlement. We know that we've got Ripple Connect, response by Ripple Swift with GPI, Ripple Liquidity, alternatives based on DLT, the use of crypto assets as a bridge currency, and they talk about Ripple Liquidity, right? So, I mean, basically what they're talking about is drawing on what I see from this statement as the use of XRP through RippleNet's liquidity, because you're talking about the use of crypto assets as a bridge currency. So there is the conversation there. That is the European Central Bank. I want to remind you, I've played this news, but I want to play this from Stuart XRP. Um, let's hear this 13 second clip, because this is from the White House and the U.S. Treasury and what they think of cryptocurrencies in decades to come. The White House 
also proposing those new tax reporting requirements and saying they're going to be needed because cryptocurrencies are going to be so important as a um, unit of exchange in the decades to come. Back over. <laughs> Cryptocurrencies are going to be so important as a unit of exchange in the decades to come. You know, I've had a lot of people with these prices down and man, how low is it going to go? I don't know. I hope it goes back to 10 cent, 13 cent, because I'm going to buy what's left. And I'm not even trying to convince anybody. You sell yours, I'm buying it. I don't, I, you know, when I really say this is not financial advice, you can't imagine how much I mean it. Because, I mean, I'm not here trying to sell a used car, right? You buy the car, you buy the car. You buy the thing, you buy the thing. It's really not up to me. I'm just sharing my perspective on what I see in the market. And if this thing dips anymore, I'm going to be making a, a mad, mad buy for me and Mrs. Backup. I can tell you that. Here we see that if you still think from Stefan Huber, who has been amazing here, if you still think XRP is a scam, listen to her. But beware and skeptical. She's just the former U.S. treasurer. <laughs> Hashtag sarcasm. Listen to this right here, because this is uh, Rosie Rios, 43rd treasurer of the United States Treasury. Her name is on $1.69 trillion floating around the earth right now out of the 1.71 that's in complete circulation. And why would she leave and go? Well, and I'm not saying it was a it was a consecutive just leave the treasury, but why would she join Ripple if she thought it wasn't a solution to where we're going? Especially knowing what the ECB and the Federal Reserve is in the process of doing with CBDCs and digital dollars. Listen, what do you think about cryptocurrency as a form of currency? Well, uh, I think the train's already left the station in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, you may or may not know that I just joined the board of Ripple. And the reason why I chose to, to join that board, it's, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. And there you have it. And Rosie Rios doesn't really, uh, you know, mix words too much. And I like that. I can appreciate that about people. And listen, you know, when it comes to different, you know, tokens in this market, you could either be invested in a token that's dealing with people from around the world's leaders in the financial banking sector. There's old Brad Garlinghouse right there, right? Christine Lagarde, who was the managing director of the IMF at the time, and many other important people around the world in the financial banking world. Or you could be a part of a pizza box campaign. That's where we're at there. Thank you to Matthew Lineye for laying it down, because it doesn't get any simpler than that. You know, uh, then we could take a look at the numbers here. This is Coins Kid. If you're not following Coins Kid, I would. And if you're not following Dark Defender, I would. These guys have been remarkable, as well as many others. I just arbitrarily grabbed these two gentlemen because they're knocking it out of the park, and so are many others that we cover here. But remember what he has been saying in his daily videos for the past month. Be prepared for the last shakeout. The bounce will be legendary. BTC, ETH, XRP, hashtag coins kit, right? I mean, this is what they're telling you. And he goes on to say here, in response to Justin Thomas, well, XRP hit 64 or 74 cents. Coins kid said 75 cents is a multi-year resistance. 64 cents is the next swing high. So really, you know, these numbers have been covered by Coins Kid, and this is where we are on this day right now with the price at 93 cents. And this is a reminder that we've gotten that same 92, 93 cent mark from Coins Kid. We've gotten that same thing from Dark Defender. Here you go, right here. 93, 88, 78 can be retested over the next couple days. These days will pass, and we'll be discussing our targets from above, which are. 272 on the short side and 1333 on the longer side. And these targets, as long as we stay within these support levels here, apparently are inevitable and are imminent compared or, or uh, 
talking about what these gentlemen think here. So, and we know that Coins Kit has even told us a twenty-seven dollar XRP is in our future if we stay within these ranges. It's all coming down the pike, is what they're saying to us. And I am listening. I'm all ears. I don't know what's going to happen, and neither do these gentlemen. But I tell you what, they're feeling good about it, and I am too. And that's not financial advice, but that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, and leave a comment below. Share with somebody you know, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. They are great products and services I use each and every day. And more importantly, they are trusted vetted links. And listen, beware of scams. There are a lot of people out here getting scammed. And I just had a, a person that I know has been following the channel and uh, for a long time. And I feel horrible for her. And listen, I just had a family member. I just, I'm going to tell you this story because I feel like it needs to be heard. And my sister, my older sister and my brother-in-law, God knows I love them both, just recently were hacked a f about a month or so ago. And they were hacked. And what happened was, is the hacker actually took over their phone and then got into their email and then disabled my brother-in-law's phone so they couldn't communicate with one another and then called the police and reported that my sister had shot and killed her husband in her house. This is what happened to her. And then the SWAT team surrounded her house and made her come out of the house with her hands up, guns drawn, and walk out to the street, face down, and then search the house and confirm that there was no one in fact hurt or killed in the house. And then once they realized it was a hacker and that it was really identity theft, they were cool to her. But what a scary moment that was in my sister's life. She could have been killed, right? So this this uh, hacker thing can get very bad and very dark very quickly. I can tell you that I've made an adjustment myself and I have taken the opportunity to learn from this and I do not... I do not have cryptocurrency applications or platforms on my phone anymore. I do no communication to my holdings from my phone anymore. That is what I'm doing. And I hope that none of you ever have to experience a phone call or an event like that in your life. Be very careful. We're all out here talking about how proud we are to be in this space this early and to experience the big gains. And we all share along this journey. But there are people out here every single day before you wake up in the morning and put your feet on the floor. They're trying to screw each and every one of us. Head on a swivel out here. Be careful. And if you ever receive any messages, email or otherwise, one, I am never asking you for money. Two, if you ever receive any messages from someone telling you that their Coinbase or the platform that you're using where your crypto is, always assume starting out, even if you just had communication with the platform, if you receive something from where your holdings are, go to the platform and sign in yourself and create a communication yourself to that to that platform. Do not pursue it from the one that was sent to you because that more than likely is in fact a scam. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch all of you on the next one. Stay safe.